Scott Ward. Board through U.S. Mail to Rivertown, UMC, 9325 Rivertown Road, Chattahoochee Hills, Georgia, 30213. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for hearing us when we call on your name. How reassuring it is to know that we serve a God who is all-powerful, yet still hears our faintest cries. Thank you that even when we don't realize it, you are near to those who love you and you want a relationship with us. Father God, we thank you for loving us. Thank you that you didn't bring us this far to leave us. Yeah. Thank you for encouraging our hearts. We know you have heard our every prayer and if yeah. it is within your will, you will answer. Oh, yeah. You are a living hope and we trust you in your faithfulness. We believe you will extend your mighty hand over the offering we present today and that it will go out in the name of gospel and that your people will be blessed by it. In the powerful name of Jesus we pray. Amen. 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 Time for another musical selection for our music minister, Knox Jr. Before our musician comes with the next selection, I want to take this opportunity to Present the psalm and produce the others. After the musical selection, you will hear the voice of none of the <clears throat> than our minister on staff here. Amen. That's Minister Dwayne Knox Sr. Yes. Give my hand clap of praise. <laughs> this is homecoming. And I figure what better way to celebrate homecoming than to have a homeboy oh, yeah. deliver the message. Uh, many of you have heard him, some of you have not, but if you have not, you will hear him today, and if you have not, you've missed a treat. So after the musical selection, the next voice that you hear will be that of none other than Minister Dwayne Knox Sr. Somebody ought to give him a hand clap of praise. <laughs> I want you to stand up for a minute. And uh, I want everybody in the congregation, even those of you on uh, YouTube, I'm um, sorry, on uh, Facebook, to point toward the pulpit. Come on up here. You're standing back. And I want you to say to him, Minister Knox. Yes, Knox. Preach, Minister Knox. Preach, Minister Knox. Minister Knox. You better preach. You better preach. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Put your hands together. Come on, you can do better than that. You're not here to glorify me. I didn't, I didn't do anything. God touched you this morning. God rose you this morning. God put this place on your mind this morning so that your soul and my soul can be fed physically today as well as spiritually. We thank our minister of music. If you didn't recognize the song, I want you to hear the words that he just played. And it simply says, rain on us, breathe on us, shower down, shower down, send your spirit, rain on us, Lord, breathe on us, shower down, shower down, send your spirit, Lord. This is something we should say when we hit the floor in the morning, before we go to our jobs, before we go out and shop, before we do anything. Ask God to send his spirit. Because when God is with you, there is nothing that's impossible. Amen. So if you had some disappointing times, if you had some moments when you felt totally alone and lost, I want you to remember this song. And go back to it, listen to it, or even do what I just did. Say the words over, because it will allow the Lord to fill you with His Spirit. Come on, church, say amen. 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 I'm not going to prolong. We are here to celebrate. It is an awesome task to stand before you, but it's a, definitely an honor. And then my my pastor went on and put a little extra pressure on me this morning. <laughs> but it's not, as I said before, it's not me, it's God. Amen. So there's nothing I do, I take credit for nothing. It is the Spirit of God that moves through me. Amen? Amen. Uh, if you're able to stand, stand. Because we're going to read the Holy Word. And it comes out of Acts chapter 4. And we're going to begin with chapter, uh, verse 31. That's Acts 4, verse 31. And we're going to read through the um, 35. And I'm reading to you out of the NIV version. And the word of God speaks and says, After they pray, the place where they were meeting, was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke word of God boldly. All the believers were one in heart and mind. No one claimed that any of their possessions were their own, but they shared everything they had. With great power, the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of our Lord Jesus. And God's grace was so powerful at work in them all that were there no needy person among them for from time to time those who owned land or houses sold them brought the money to from the sales and put it at the apostles feet and it was distributed to anyone who had need this is the word of God for the people of the Thanks be to God. You may be seated. As you know, our pastor has been, he has been on a mission this year. And, and as I was praying to God and asking him what could we talk about on homecoming, and this came to mind. And it simply says, becoming a church on fire. Mm -hmm. Becoming a church on fire. Because we have a pastor that's on fire right now. He's got some things and he's not he's not holding back. He's telling us the truth. And he's living what he's preaching. And he said that our, he, he, he did a sermon not too long ago. Well, we were worried about the church being full. We were worried about uh, adding to the membership. We were worried about those particular things that church bodies worried about, and he was saying, the Lord put it on my heart, my heart to quit 
asking and quit going in that direction about filling these pews up, but we need to feed the souls of the people that come. Amen. 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 So that's our mission now, <clears throat> to feed souls. Amen? Amen? Can I tell you a story? Mm -hmm. The story was uh, about this little town, and in the little town that was atheist. He was not a bad man, and he was, but he definitely was not a believer. And he was not interested in the church. There was only one church in the area. And then one day, the church building caught on fire. And the whole town ran toward it to help uh, uh, extinguish the flames, including the town uh, atheists. Someone hollered out, hey, this is the first time I've seen you run into the church. Well, he hollered back. This is the first time I've actually ever seen the church on fire. <laughs> what happens in our uh, business of life, we get comfortable in church. What are you talking about, miss? We get comfortable. We come and we expect to sit in the same seat. All right now. You know that? That's my seat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of talking to my mom right now. But, but, but here's the difference. I know if she came and somebody was sitting there, she wouldn't ask them to move. She'll find another seat. That's the difference. See, you come in and you think, that's my spot. You come in and you think, that's my job. You come in and pass and you think, that I'm the one to be able to do this and do that. I'm the only one to do Sunday school. I'm the only one to do Bible study. See, we get comfortable and complacent with even in the church. All right. Then let me take you and give you an example. If you show up on your job, unless you're the CEO, mm -hmm. unless you're the president, unless you're the one that owns the business, if they tell you to go out there and dump the trash, you run. Because mm -hmm. that's the difference in getting your paycheck or not getting a paycheck. Am I right? Amen. Amen. So why do we do differently when we come in the house of faith? Right. All right. Come on, man. Only difference is pastors shouldn't have to ask you to do anything. That's right. Amen. Now I'm going to use an example. I'm going to use my son and then I'm going to go on into the, the, the mess. I called. He, he took me to a men's breakfast. We had a good time and just before I left, uh, I had said, look, I need you to come and help me cut the grass at the church. And, and then he kind of, you have to understand, we have a good relationship. We, we're buddies now. <laughs> and he kind of, mm. <laughs> you know what that mm meant? I don't cut grass at my own. That's why I, I stay in the apartment, so I don't have to cut grass. I know what that mmm meant. <laughs> but because we have such a good relationship, he said, yeah, Dad, I, I, I come here to cut the grass. Well, let me tell you, we ain't got to ride more. <laughs> I got to push more, because I don't have a big yard in my house. So we had push more, we had our little weed eaters, and we had all our little accessories that I have, and we came, we met, and he looked at me, he said, Dad, we're going to cut the whole yard? <laughs> I said, my intention is to get the front and the side so they look decent when someone show up. And I was going to trim the hedges and I was going to do all those wonderful things. And we got started. But I'm telling you this, that when God's people put God first and you do God's work without being asked, God will show up. While we were pushing, and while we were weed eating, and while we were trimming hedges, guess what? My cousin showed up. Now, my cousin does it for a living. So when he show up, he show up with a truck and a trailer. And he pulled in. He pulled in because he was on his way back down the road to park his equipment. He pulled in. He, they unloaded. They didn't ask, do you need my help? They didn't ask nothing. He unloaded the ride more, one of those big ones on. 
and he pulled his weed eater out, and they got, see, he had a real trouble. See, I got this little electric thing. He pulled out a gag. I cut one scrub, and he cut about five. But I, I wanted to tell you that because when you do what God put on your heart to do, God not only just, he doesn't just send you there, he'll send you the resources. He'll give you the help oh, yeah. that you need. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Needed to say it was going to be about two, three hours with me and my son down here. <laughs> we might have spent 30 minutes cutting the grass yesterday, Pastor, right. because we were willing to do God's work. Yeah. Now, let me get on into this scripture. Amen. Amen. As we uh, uh, was talking about the atheists, and, and the atheists uh, made his statement when he said, this is the first time I've ever seen the church on fire. See, I'm asking God for something to happen here at Rivertown. We, we, we don't want a church just going through the motion. Mm -hmm. The church that, that focus on what they used to be, mm, I might need to stand in a chair, because this is going to hit us. <laughs> when we, we focus on what a church used to be, and usually aren't, and it will never be. Amen. I don't want to hear about what the church used to be. Did you hear me? I don't want to hear about what the church used to be. I want to hear from those who believe in what it can be and will be. You know, good or bad, to focus on the past can ruin the present and destroy the future. Some would say what we need is some new converts. That's usually what churches say that will set the church on fire. In other words, I'm not going to do it. I want somebody else to come in and do it. No, 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 no. What we need is some fire and people who will be, and people will be converted. Can God entrust us with new converts? If there's no fire that's in the church already, if there's nothing happening in the church already, you can bring as many converts in here as you want. Mm -hmm. They'll come and they'll go. Right. But if there's a fire mm -hmm. already stirred up, mm -hmm. then you'll find out they'll come and they'll stay. Amen. Our hearts have to change. And our hearts have to be on fire for the work of God. And we got to be true believers. Look at Genesis chapter 22. When God told Abraham, take his son Isaac to the mountains and become a human sacrifice. They arrived at their location and Isaac still did not realize that he was going to be the sacrifice. But Isaac knew that there, there had to be three things to have a sacrifice. Wood, fire, and a lamb. And Isaac made the observation when we look at 22.7, and he said, he looked and he saw the fire in the wood. But he asked Abraham, his dad, where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Thousands of years later, as we at most churches around us, we can answer the question like, this is, we have the wood, we have the lamb, Christ, Jesus Christ. But where is the fire? Where is the fire? I'm going to say it again. Where is the fire? Are you, are you running out of fuel? It is our responsibility to keep the fire alive. It's our responsibility, Pastor. He's been saying it for a long time. We've been dealing this since 2022 came in. Our pastor has been on the road. That's why you heard in the announcements we're doing community service. Yeah, we small. We're a few in number. But that has nothing to do with doing the work of God. Amen. Amen. And so, so my thing this morning is, so what are the characteristics of a church on fire for God? That's, this, that's why we have Acts 4, or Acts, as an example this morning, especially in Acts 4. It gives us some points. This a good illustration of what a church should look like that's on fire. A church on fire is one, 
filled with the Holy Ghost and the power. When we look at verse 8, then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, uh, uh, so other words that's telling us that the pastor, mm, he was filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. You, you, you're looking at me strange saying, what are you talking about? Aren't they, all pastors filled with the Holy Spirit. Well, I'm here to tell you, no, they're not. No, they're not. Let me, let me tell you what the Bible tells us. That you can heal in my name. You can raise the dead in my name. You can heal the lame in my name. You can cure the blind in my name. But then when you knock on the pearly gates, I just may say no. Because it ain't about what you do in my name. It's about what's in your heart that you're doing in my name. Filled with the Holy Spirit. When we look, the pastor has to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Then we look at verse 31. And when they, it says, when they pray. See, I can stop right there. Now that's a lot of you up. I can start with this morning. How many of you prayed before you came to church? We ain't going to go back and talk about all last week. How many of you prayed before you went to the bank? ball game yesterday or the day before. How many of you pray before you did anything? That is one of the biggest things that we are lacking as believers. We wait until things happen to pray. We wait till things go uh, 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 bad to come to the pastor and ask the church to pray. We're supposed to pray before we do anything. That's the difference between us and the world. In verse 31, it says, when they prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken. See, it, it was shaken. Do you know, do you know, do you know the difference between just being there and something being shaken? Yes. 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 And so it was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they spoke the word of God with boldness. Other words, the people, too, has to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You want to know why most are afraid to witness? Their foundation has yet to be shaken. All right. All right. We can't depend on, on, on man-made excitement to get the job done. I'm, saying, I'm talking about these things are great things to do, Pastor. And I think that's what you've been talking to us. It's great to have all these programs. Program, promotion, like just like having homecoming. But if we aren't getting our souls filled, Mm. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then, yeah. The, then the, 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 the point is being missed. Right. Amen. First Corinthians, second chapter, verse 4 and verse 5 tells us, You in my speech and my preaching were not persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of spirit and power, that your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. We're talking about the power of God through the Holy Ghost. Paul says, I'm not dependent upon my own wisdom. Other words, he was talking, the, 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 the great sermons that I'm giving, the great message that I'm del delivering, or even the funny stories that you hear, those things, uh, uh, they don't hurt. Didn't hurt to do a story before I started my sermon, but those aren't the things that give us power. Yes. 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 It wasn't the method or the programs or the activities or the organization. It's because somebody prayed. You didn't hear me. Verse 31 says, they prayed. It was only after they prayed that the power of God was released in the air. When God is working and decisions are being made, you can mark it down and you can take it to the bank. Somebody prayed. Amen. Somebody paid the price. Yeah. Somebody was on their knees like our pastor. Yeah. Somebody was on their knees like grandmama and mama were praying when we were being hard-headed and out there in the world. Right. They were at home on their knees praying for you. Somebody spent some time in prayer. 
When a pastor and the people are filled with the power of God, watch this, souls will be saved. Yes. When a pastor and the people are filled with the power of God, worship service will be inspiring and music uplifting. Yes. Ephesians 5.18 tells us, instead, be filled with the Spirit, mm -hmm. speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord. When a pastor and the people are filled with the power of God, Amen. divine wisdom will accompany all your church decisions. When a pastor and the people are filled with the power of God, there will be no sitting down waiting for someone else to make the decisions and do the work of God. We must serve God in the energy of the spirit rather than the energy of flesh. So many times we rely on our ability. And I can say this, Pastor, because when I was 25, I thought I was invisible. How I, how I thought that, look, watch this. Chris Allen is a witness. If you don't believe what I'm about to say, you can go over there and ask Chris. But I I will play softball all day Saturday. Yes, Lord. Knowing that at 6 o'clock I got to go to work. I was working the night shift, huh? I will play softball all day Sunday. You hear me? I said Sunday. Yes, I did. Mama was a witness. She'll tell you. Then go right back in work. And then Monday on my uh, first off day, I will pay Pass out. <laughs> Sleep all day, huh? So I will only get one day off the week. Because the one day I was sleeping, recovering from playing softball all weekend. And that, and I, if that didn't blow your mind, we usually play one, two, uh, 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 um, what you call during the week. Um, I'm trying to say what the name. Anyway, the one tournaments during the week. The regular games. In division, division, there's the word. So you watch, I mean, as a young man, I was doing that. And I was still playing softball and working and taking care of what I thought I was doing. Amen. I thought I was doing it. I thought I was a big man. But if I go back and look, I realize how much time I was not. I was not a father. Let me get that straight. And I have kids and I have a wife. So I, I, I wasn't neglecting that. But I was neglecting God. I was neglecting the work that God had in me to do. I was neglecting and missing so many blessings. Thought I had it though. And I know some of you think you got it going on too right now. We must serve God with energy of the spirit rather than the energy of the flesh. Then it's not us trying to make something happen, but it's us allowing something to happen to us, through us, and in spite of us. The church is on fire when it is filled with God's power. That's the first thing. You got to be filled with God's power. What are you talking about? See, I'm talking about the Holy Spirit. And, and, and we have to go back to uh, verse 2 of Acts. And we find that the apostles have been equipped because they have been taught and they have been following Jesus all this time. Mm -hmm. Jesus had equipped them. But nothing really happened until they received the Holy Spirit, which gave them the power of God. And the Pentecost is what I'm talking about. When the apostles and everybody that was around could, uh, in voice, hearing, uh, distance, they saw and they heard the Holy Spirit filling those apostles and then they heard in different tongues and understood one another because the power of God allows you. Yes. To be the image of God. Amen. The power of God. And see, and then the uh, apostles started speaking boldly. I'm not going to do a Bible lesson here to take you back when there was many times that they, Jesus had to tell them, ye of little faith. But now they were speaking boldly. 
and 3,000 souls were saved because of the power of God. They were able to walk around and heal the lame and do all the things that Jesus did. Because now they had the power of God. Secondly, the second characteristics of the church on fire. We are all equal in position. We are all equal in position. There's no I in church. So if you're coming in and you're saying, that's my seat, you're already now stay in pastor. You just might be bound for hell. Because you got I syndrome. There's no I syndrome in God. God gets all the glory. Because God says, if I get all the glory, your reward is to be with me in heaven. But if you're running around here getting all the rewards because you want the rewards, then the Bible says that is your reward. I'm not quoting the scripture from word by word, but I'm telling you what's in the Bible. We can both go there and find it. But we, what is happening in the church of Acts, everyone is pulling in the same direction. They are bound and woven together in a common goal. The church is on fire for God. When we have a common goal, when we are looking for God to be glorified and not us, and when we all journey equal to each equally in unity, then we'll find out that God will show up and Pastor said it earlier. And he not only shows up, he'll show up. Ain't that right, little Dwayne? Amen. He showed up yesterday. I want to show you some weaknesses though, some dangers that fall on the members when we aren't allowing God to get all the glory. One, magnifying our importance. This happens when we feel that we deserve special treatment or a special position. When my opinion is the only one that matters. If I hear something, say out. Pride is taken down many great preachers. Amen. History is strong. When God decides to build a church, even the gates of hell cannot stand in the way. Amen. When God is in it. Another danger is minimizing your importance. Doesn't matter if I'm there or not. Somebody said that today. Doesn't matter if I'm there or not. And don't do uh, 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 things will go on. You're minimizing your importance to, to this body of Christ. There is something for all of us to do. And if you know what you what they say in church, little is much when God is in. Amen. So just stay faithful. Don't minimize your importance to this spot right. or anybody. Because we've got some friends here today. Wherever you serve God, don't minimize your importance. If you show up, you might be the difference in somebody's life. You can say what you want. Somebody's watching you. Somebody is, especially if you confessed as a believer, they want to see if you live the way you preach. And another danger is misplacing our importance. This is trying to do something God never intended for us to do. How do I know if I have the ability to sing or a gift to teach? Simply, other people will have the gift of listening to you. That's how you know. Amen. If you're doing what God has for you to do, and, and, and if you're doing it in the glory of God, he will bring people. He will give you resources. And uh, as far as me and the pastor go, you'll find out people simply are willing to listen and uh, ask for your guidance. Amen. 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 In other words, if you are thinking that you can sing, mm -hmm. it simply says that uh, other people be willing to listen to you. Mm -hmm. 
If you're present and can hear my voice, raise your hand. If you're present and you can hear my voice, raise your hand. If you're watching, raise your hand. If you're watching, raise your hand. You have Jesus in your heart. You have at least one spiritual gift to use for God. I didn't see a whole lot of hands raised. I'm going to say it again. If you're, you're able to hear my voice, raise your hand. Because you have at least one spiritual gift that you can use in the house of faith. Yeah, come on somebody. Come on somebody. Come on. Because it's true. It's true. If you love to talk, then you should have volunteered to do the announcements. If you have the ability to uh, push your lawnmower, yeah, you ought to be doing it for Christ. If you have the ability to do numbers and finance, then you ought to be on in the finance committee. I'm just talking to you. I'm just talking to you. If you have the great ability to clean your house, you ought to be cleaning God's house too. There's a gift that God's given you, and we're supposed to not only use it out there, but use it in the house of faith. A church on fire for God is not only filled with the power in equal position, last but not least, the third characteristic of a church on fire is evangelistic in priority. What are you talking about now? Evangelizing. Other words, get off your ducky. <laughs> Go out there to a world that don't know it. Because we know it. Most people in the church know it. But it's telling us we need to evangelize to those that what? Don't know it. The very best outreach of a church can have is one that is lived by its people as they go about their daily lives. Come on, somebody. Bringing people to the church, witnessing on your job. Witnesses in the grocery store, witnesses at the gas pump, witnesses in, in the doctor's office. River Town mm -hmm. is, a, is a place in a hospital for sinners, mm -hmm. right. not a resting home for saints. Come on. Come on, we are to be fishers of men mm -hmm. and not keepers of an aquarium. Right. Other words, right. other words. We need to be out there fishing yeah, yeah. for God yeah. and not sitting in here watching yeah. one another. That's what you do when you go to an aquarium, right? You watch the fish swim. We need, to, we need to be out there. I believe that if we live out the same kind of faith as the earlier church that we're talking about, like in Acts 4, uh, uh, exhibit in their lives that we will have the same results in our lives and in our community as the early church did. In this church, in the books of Acts, in different, many, many differently ways than the, uh, it's not many different ways than the church today. Yes? Should it be? No. Is God, is the God that we pray for? Is that the same God they pray for? The God that shook them is the same God who needs to shake us today. The God who filled them is the God who desires to fill us with his Holy Spirit and his power. The God that empowered them to speak is the God who will empower you in me to speak boldly about Jesus Christ. Their encounter with God must be our encounter with God. Doesn't look like us in, uh, he doesn't look at us in the size of our building, size of our congregation, how many programs you put on, not even if you can sing well or preach well. He looks upon us to see whether we desire to have an encounter with him. Amen. Amen. A church that's on fire. It's a church 
to have an encounter with God. Amen. And when we have an encounter with God, we take on not only his image, but his power. Oh, yeah. There is nothing that happened back in Acts 4 that cannot happen today. Amen. God empowered his people then, and he empowered us today. The thing, the difference is in, are you seeking to have an encounter with him on a daily basis? See, I messed you up. Some of you up right there. Because some of you have an encounter on Sunday. But you go right back Monday doing what you did. Some of you might have an encounter on Wednesday because that's Bible study night. But then Thursday, Friday, Saturday, you're back to being yourself. I'm talking about getting up and having an encounter with Jesus before we go to work, before we go out and play, yeah. before we go out and do anything, have an encounter with Jesus. Because you don't know Amen. who you might just impress. Amen. Because Amen. of the way you talk, That's right. the way you act, yes. and the things that you don't do. Yeah. Right. See, I, I, can start, I can talk about that, Pastor. Because right. when I play softball, I drink beer. I had lots of friends. Because I worked at a package store and I could get a discount. I took the bill. I had lots of friends. But when I got my soul saved, All right. those friends today said, how in the world, Dwayne, that you could still look pretty good? <laughs> You're still handsome. I'm just messing with you. But they do say, you still look good, Dwayne. It has nothing to do with me. They kept living their life. They kept doing the things we I used to do. And that got, took a toll on them. I changed. I started giving God the glory. I started walking and encountering with God. And because that, I am different. You can take me and put me in a script club. <laughs> Don't matter. I'm not going to do anything to jeopardize my walk with God. They're going to kick me out because I'm going to start trying to save souls. And tell to... I'm just talking. There. Can we be transparent? Can we be real? We are peculiar. And we are supposed to be different. Yes. And if they can't tell the difference in you when you're out there in the world, then you need to always, I'm going to use my line, you need to check yourself. Amen. Because we are supposed to be different. I'm done. Mm -hmm. Becoming a church on fire. We must be filled with God's power. Every position is equal. But the most thing of all, we need to be a church that's willing to encounter God. Amen. You want to do something, you want to put on a program, you want to, uh, uh, as we get ready to go out and do a community service, we need to pray. Yes. Yes. Ask God for God. Seek God right. first. And God will tell us exactly what we need to do. Amen. Become a church on fire. Don't get complacent. If you did something well last month, and we did, this is a new month. You need to do something else well. All this, you need to do something else well. Don't get complacent with, with what you're doing. We have an awesome BBS, but we're not going to let BBS be the only thing that we offer to our children and to our people. Amen? Amen. 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 I'm done. Amen. God bless you. God keep you. Amen. For those that are able to stand, stand. As we open up the doors of the church and we extend the arm of fellowship to those that may not know Christ, we extend the arm of fellowship maybe You've been saved and you uh, strayed. So we extend you the arm to come back. It's never too late. 
as long as you have breath to get to restart your life with Christ. There's nothing like a relationship with Christ. Amen. There's nothing like your Christ and the true essence of your, your heart. There's nothing like being in a relationship with God and in a relationship with the church. Amen. Maybe see. standing in the need of prayer for. First of all, I can't answer it, I can't do it, but I can take him to the one who can. Amen. So right now we come before God Almighty, Amen. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yes. Yes. And Lord, we lift this young man up to you right now, Lord God. You know what's going on in his life. Yes. You know what he stands in the need of. Lord God, it, it, it may be one thing or it may be another. But as we come together today, we come, Lord God, believing that you can do all things. Yes. Believing, Lord God, that whatever it is that this young man stands in the need of, Lord God, that you can bless him in, yes. and, and that, Lord God, you yes. can do what yes. nobody else can do. Yes. So, Lord God, touch him right now. Touch, touch, touch. touch his heart, Lord God. Touch his mind. Touch his, touch his body, Lord God. Touch him, Lord God, and do what only you can do. Whatever it may be, Lord God, we just lift it up to you in the name of Jesus. In your word, you say when, when, when the righteous, uh, the prayers of the righteous availeth much. And you say when a brother or sister is in the need, and that the elders should come and lay hands on them. Lord God, we are laying hands right now. And we are believing in the name of Jesus that all things are possible. Yes, Lord. So, Lord God, right now, and, and, and I didn't ask and I want to ask right now. Lord, this is Dwayne. And he stands, Lord, uh, kneels, Lord God, in your presence. And Lord God, I know yes. that you yes. can do all things. Yes. So Lord God, touch him right now. Yes. Fill him, Lord God, with your love. Yes. Fill him, Lord God, with your spirit. Yes. Fill him, Lord God, with your very presence. Yes. Let him know that wherever he may go, that you're right there with him. Yes. Yes. That you will lead and you yes. will guide him. Yes. Yes. And that you Wait, look, you never walk alone. Mm. God walks with you every step of the way. Thank you. So trust, Thank you. trust, and believe. Yes. Thank you. That Jesus, Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the life, yes. will do whatever it is you need to do. Amen. In Jesus' name, we pray. Yes. And we claim the victory. Yes. We claim the victory. Yes. We claim. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And knowing that whatever you ask, and let me say this before you rise, you may not get it when you want it, but God is always on time. Rise knowing that God will take care of you. In Jesus' name. Shortly thereafter, the plague hit. 
So although I have names on a roll, they are faces that I don't know. But now that we are back, right now we're doing first and third, but we're going to go back and we're going to do first, second, third, and fourth. Because I want to know my people. I want to know God's people. Let me take that back. But I want to know, I want to have a close personal relationship with the members of this church. I want to know you individually, and I want you to know me. Because I truly believe that this little church called Rivertown yet has a mission. I want my young folk, and I don't want to take too long, but I, I, want, I got you here, so I want to talk to my young folk. I have said time and time again, first of all, I want to know what it is that you're looking for in a church. But I can't know if you don't tell me. But I, 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 and why am I asking that? Because what you want in a church is what I want the church to be. You see, I, I'm an old man. I'm getting ready to sit down on the bench. But this church will go on because of you young folk. It's up to you to pick up the mantle. Sister Winnie has carried it on for years. Other Sister Diane has carried it on for years. But now it's your time. And God is looking just like Minister Knox said. All of you sitting out there got a talent. Some of you can sing. There's a choir off up here. Some of you can teach. There's a need for youth Bible study. Some of you can, you know, all of you can make phone calls. There's a need to have a phone ministry where we call and just say, how are you doing today? Don't wait for me to make all the phone calls. You can call somebody and just say, look, I was just thinking about y'all. Women, y'all know y'all like talk on the phone anyhow. <laughs> so just call somebody. Just come together and form a prayer team. And just call somebody. You never know what that one call will do. If you just say, I just call to say I love you. You don't have to go any further than that. I'm, let me shut up. Brother, Brother Knox has already preached. I don't need to preach anymore. I will ask this. Do we have guests with us today that aren't members of Rivertown? And if you are, if you will either stand. I won't even ask you to stand. Just raise your hand. Amen. 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 Well, I want to tell you that we are blessed with your presence here. We don't take your presence for granted. We thank God that you took the opportunity to come and be with us today and worship with us today. And if you heard a good word from the man of God this morning, would you give him a hand and clap for praise? For those of you who didn't raise your hands, that means you members. <laughs> and members, we need to catch on fire. There's a song that says somebody ought to catch on fire and burn with the Holy Ghost. A member need to catch on fire and burn with the power of the Holy Ghost. The preacher needs to catch on fire yeah. and burn with the power of the Holy Ghost. I'm through sitting down. Go ahead, Brother Dante. Close us out. Say amen. amen. Thank you, my brother. I bless you. Amen. We're here if you need us. Amen. Just wanted to say that. That's my cousin. Mm -hmm. Haven't seen him in a while. It's good to see you. It's good to be in your presence good to be in your presence. Thank you for visiting. Thank you for coming. 
Thank you, family and friends, as you, those who are able to stand, let's stand. Please stay in fellowship with us. We're going to do the benediction and the blessings of the food so we can all fellowship downstairs together. <clears throat> we ask our steward to come and take the light from the altar. Remember, as the light has been taken from the altar, we'll charge as people of God to take this light out into a dark world and let your light shine. Other, other words, live like you preach. Live like you learn in the word of God. That we're supposed to be an encouragement. We're supposed to invite and be a witness of the goodness of God. So, through your words, encourage somebody this week. And if you can help somebody, help somebody this week. So many of us get caught up on what we get in return. I tell my kids, if you got something to give, you give it freely. Don't worry about what they do with it. Because you get your glory through God. Your reward comes through God. So you did what God asked you to do. Is that is to feed the ones that need to be fed. Clothe the one that needs to be clothed. Tend to the one that needs uh, to uh, care. That's your job. That's what you charge. So, as the light is taken from the altar, we are charged to take the light into a dark world. God, thank you for this day. Thank you for being present in our hearts and minds. Thank you, God, for feed, feeding our souls and our minds through your word today. And then, Father God, as we get ready to fellowship downstairs, we ask you to bless the ones that prepare the food. Bless us that are going to partake of it for the nourishment of our body. But most of all, Father, stay present in our hearts and minds we leave this place called Rivertown. Father God, be the pilot, not the co-pilot. Lead, guide, and direct us in the way that you would have for us to go. Father God, be with us on every turn and every crew. Be with us with every hill and every back. Be with us, Father God, because if we know that you're there, Father God, first of all, that we're not alone. Secondly, if you're there, Father God, we know that you will take care of our needs. If you're there, Father God, we know that we are in the right place at the right time. Yes. We love you and we thank you, God, for all that you do. Yes. God's people, go in peace. God's people, go in peace. God's people, go in peace. Amen. Amen. I love you and anything you can do about it.